Welcome back to Cisco Knowledge Base. This is Zach from Content Security Team. Today we'll discuss a functionality was added with the Async OS version 8.5x and above. It's called the LDAP External Authentication on Web Security Appliance. And as we said before, this is was added in Async OS version 8.5x and above. The documentation page were listed here. Once this release is available for our um, large customer base on a GA release or as a limited availability, user guide and release notes will be published here as well. And this is the page on www.cisco.com portal where all the user guide is currently listed today. Dashboard will be 8.5 available in near future. So let's talk about a little bit more detail exactly. What is the LDAP external authentication functionality provides administrator a benefit? So historically LDAP External authentication is a centralized point of authentication where a repository of a user information and, and then multiple devices on the network can authenticate on a one central location. That's for ease of management as well and security. So the use cases would be the many organizations manage their store their information on privilege with LDAP centralized database. So these LDAP authentication using the bind method, and it's a two-step process essentially, uses a user password input to provide that protection. In order to obtain user privilege after successful authentication, a mapping scheme must be configured and match on both ends. So in this case, it will be web security appliance and on the LDAP external server. In addition, we can have more than one groups can be mapped to a single iron port group users. Very briefly, um, how you configure this functionality for X LDAP external authentication. From the GUI, it's network authentication. First, you have to add a realm. That's the LDAP realm in this case. Once you do that, then you have to configure a user group course and also the external authentication. Once this occurred, then you go under system administration users and enable external authentication and map the groups. We'll run through these steps, will make more sense. So where these data has been um, registered and located if we have a troubleshooting. From the CLI, we can look at the external authentication log. In addition, we can run these commands, all these in the GUI from the command line as well, using user config, external, and setup, and it walks through these steps as well. And we'll look at the example. So for troubleshooting, we can look under user config. There are several options there. External authentication RPC server, LDAP server logs, and then trace level external authentication log that gives a lot more detail for administrator to look at it. So what are the caveats? Let's talk about briefly. So how we can distinguish if the user that coming in is a local or is an external LDAP user? So a local user will be stored in Etsy password, and if you can cat that, we can see those. In addition, for bullet one, when we tail the LDAP external authentication log, we can see it if the user is coming in as a local or as an external user or LDAP user. So username will, will give us a more detail. So if the username that coming in is does not reside on web security appliance, that resides on an external 
Dow will show you one way to do it, and we'll look at the logs as well. Do we support LDAP secure? Yes, we do. We also support Active Directory as long as the Active Directory servers have LDAP enabled. That's the prerequisite. Here are some of the uh, sample external authentication logs. These are I have captured in uh, trace mode, which is option 5 on the log config for given logs. And we'll look at that as well. And these are standard mode when we see a user coming in as logged in or session ended or, or authenticated. It will give you the user ID and the client IP is coming in. Or if it logs out, user IP again, session ended, and there's some hash. So with that, let's look at the configuration and, and do a quick test. So first we go to under network authentication add realm. Let's pull this up. We'll go under network authentication. So under network authentication, I have realm configured just called LDAP. So the first part is adding is straightforward. Given name, I'm using version three. I am not testing with the use secure, but you can with these options here. That's the port I'm listening. If I are, if you're using on a secure LDAP, the port need to be updated as well. The second part, if we look at the config guide, will be user group queries. These are my user groups setting. So I have a user ID and other functionality here. I can change it to define group by authorized LDAP, but I left it as a no group authorized, but just the user attribute as a user ID. After that is the user group. Once this is configured, then you do external authentication. Let's make maximize here so easy to see. So this is my external authentication part. This is where the it's very important so these build strings are properly configured. These are the one that's gonna pull mapping down. So you base DM. That's cisco.com, and these are the user full name variables, and then query, and then the string again. So three parts: your LDAP authentication part, user group part, external authentication part. Let's do a quick test. Okay, so so far it looks so good. Test complete. And if you look at it, I don't see any red marks. Everything else is resolved. Let's look at our notes. So once we configure this part, step number four is to enable external authentication. And that's where we go to system administration and users. System administrations, users. On the bottom of the page, there is the option external authentication. Edit global setting. So I kept it simple, just called it LDAP. LDAP. Here is the key part. The group name in the directory. These are the group. I've called it ESA admin, WSA admin. This sits on on the external authentication server. 
So the role, these roles are administrator, it could be operator, it could be read-only, it could be a guest. But both of these groups are on external server, which is This is the server, 172.18.254.82. It's my external LDAP server, is the one it's referring to. So external authentication is enabled. Name of the server, if you have a multiple will show, the radius is also there as well as an option. Um, this is the timeout to wait for a valid response. That can be, this is a user or admin configurable. I can add more row to have more groups added as needed. So we'll cancel out of here. So that's the config part. Now as to transaction, where these are logged, these are external authentication log that will log all these. So let's log into one of the um, appliances and here we are. So I'm telling the log, this is the external authentication log. Uh, in my example, I think it's number 10. So I'm telling external auth log number 10, and that could be various, depending on how many other logs you have configured prior to that. These are the values I think it was pulled when I was running in the trace mode. Now the trace mode has been disabled. We'll look at the, the normal mode. Info mode. So I'll log in. First, I will log in as a local admin. This will give you an option the date and timestamps coming in as an admin, local IP address, and authenticator successfully. This will add, let's say, if you go log out that should add another transaction as a logging out same IP same user now I will log in as an external user with my ID once I log in this will show up as my user ID this is the user that does not sit on local web security appliance. This is the user is on external LDAP server. And to verify, just to make sure, we'll go under system administrations, users. The only user I have in here is admin, which is a local admin. The user is Z-A-C-S-H-A-I-K, it sits on external authentication server, as we showed earlier on the LDAP side of it. And here's the local IP, and was authenticated successfully. Now let's go and change. If we are troubleshooting a user authentication issue, you can add or modify the logs in this case, an external authentication log to a trace level. That gives you a lot more information, but just the warning is, is a lot of value, a lot of detail he adds, so make sure you flip it back when you're done. We'll say submit. Commit. And one more time. Okay. Now what happened is, Let's log out. So as we see, the value, the information that is, it maps out in the trace mode is a lot more, which is understandable. All the groups, the mapping, the IP address of the server, the LDAP, this is the external servers. And again, how much each step is taken to pull these group groups in object. Member user ID, this is the WSA admin. 
and this is the second one that we have configured on the local machine. Same thing, so if you look at it here, log out, IP address again, with all these additional information. We'll try one more time, we'll log in, this time as, as a local admin. So if you see it, this is local admin and it was authenticated successfully. With the external user, it has all the external ports connected to the ex This is the server and it's trying all these information. So it's good for troubleshooting, but I think it's a best practice to change it back once you're done. And that's exactly what I would do now. Log subscription. External authentication log. Back to info. That's the default setting. Submit. And commit. Okay. So back to our notes. We went through these config. We we troubleshoot it, we looked at it. The other command on the user config, let's take a look at that as well. So here's the, the command, user config, we do external. And then we'll do a setup, yes. And then it will allow you to set up the group as an LDAP. We can do as a new as well. So once we pick up as a new, it just through the same set of setting the groups and and all the additional setting as we went through in the GUI. So it depends on the parameters, how you feel comfortable with the command line or the GUI. So but um, that could be done as well. Okay. So with that these are the sample logs as we looked at it. Um, this is in a trace level, this is the standard log and that will bring us to review. So the functionality was added with the version 8.5x async OS. It's the configuring LDAP external authentication that provides a one central location for administrator to manage the network and keep tap on the user's access. There are many benefits and use cases are, are described. Configuration steps are listed here. It could be done from the GUI or from the command line as well. We can look at the user config command. There are several options as we looked at it for troubleshooting, need be, right here. And some of the um, uh, sample external authentication log in a trace level or in a standard access log. Uh, external authentication log with the informational as a value. With that, thank you so much. That covers this topic. Have a great afternoon, have a great day, and great evening. Thanks again for taking the time, and we'll see you in another Knowledge Base soon. Thank you.